how do you actually combine metformin and terzepatite? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Megan. I'm a board certified physician in internal medicine, lifestyle medicine, and obesity medicine. And this is really important because I actually prescribe these medications all the time. I actually talk to patients about their weight all the time. I've helped hundreds of patients lose weight, and I'm here to help you too. So if you're confused about your weight, if you have questions about weight medicine, and if you want medically based answers to your weight questions, you are in the right place. Let's get started. So today was a requested video on specifically how metformin and Zepbound can be used together. So as a disclaimer, this is not personal medical advice, but I'm gonna walk you through how I would think about this clinically from two different scenarios. So in the first of these hypothetical situations, somebody is, their A1C is creeping up and they want to try an oral medication first, um, but other medications aren't a great fit. And metformin, to be honest, metformin is usually the first option in terms of if someone is in the pre-diabetic range. Um, it's pretty much a standard go-to. Um, usually if we're starting with metformin first, I always start at 500 milligrams, which is the lowest dose. Usually you have to start with um, immediate release first because a lot of insurances won't cover extended release. And sometimes people uh, tolerate the immediate release just fine. So start with the 500, see how it goes, warn people they may have some bowel issues, and I've made a whole video on metformin side effects. You can definitely check that out. And then we are increasing their dose every couple of weeks, depending on how things are going. Metformin, you know, for prediabetes, the dosing's a little different. You start, sometimes I'll start at 500, but standard dose for prediabetes is actually to start at 850 milligrams. So somewhere around there, um, and then increasing the dose is tolerated or based on what the patient needs. And you can go up to 2000 milligrams per day of metformin, and you can do that as a split dose. Um, so half in the morning, half at night. I have some patients that like to take it all at once and that seems to work best for them. Um, but most people generally prefer the split dosing with meals is the best tolerated. And as always with metformin, I am watching for side effects. And of course, um, usually the side effects get better with time, but not always. But metformin is one of those medications that tends to um, be even more um, problematic in terms of side effects than Zepbound. So let's say I have a patient, they're on metformin, they're maxed out on metformin, or they're at the highest dose that they can tolerate. And that's about maybe for some people it's 500, for some people it's 1,000. It really depends on what you're using the metformin for. If you're using it for just weight, um, I'm gonna try to get them up to the highest dose to get the best effect. But if I'm using it just for pre-diabetes or to get their A1C, their, their numbers down, to get that um, blood sugar down, then I might not need to go up um, as far as the 2000 milligrams. And it really just depends on somebody's overall clinical picture. But let's say they are on the maximum dose that we want them, that I want them, that they wanna be on. And um, what do we do then? Let's say also they have a BMI that is higher than we feel like is healthy for them. And for whatever reason, the metformin hasn't brought it down a significant amount. And that can definitely happen because metformin is one of the weaker oral medications for weight. So I'm definitely making sure that they're stable on their metformin first and that the side effect profile is very manageable. And in this theoretical situation, we, the patient and I decide to add terzepatide or zepbound for weight management. Um, I think it's easier to add zepbound to metformin than it is to add metformin to zepbound because uh, the side effects, again, for metformin tend to be a little bit worse. So I'm gonna start them off at the lowest dose of the zepbound at the 2.5 milligrams. And it really depends on their side effects and what's going on and how they react in terms of how um, soon I'm gonna titrate them up. So basically it's how I would titrate anybody on this dose, but I'm extra, extra cautious because they're already on metformin. I'm also watching for any um, signs of low blood sugar because metformin can 
cause low blood sugar. It's less of an issue if you're really using it for weight, for, if you're using both for weight. But if somebody has um, pre-diabetes, then um, you wanna be a little bit more careful. These are definitely people that I am seeing pretty much every four weeks. Um, some people, you know, depending on the medication combination that they're on, um, and depending how, how pharmacologically robust they are, um, I will see them every six weeks, every eight weeks, but on this particular combination, I really would prefer to see people pretty regularly um, to check on how things are going. So probably for most people, I'm anticipating that maybe we titrate up the uh, ZetBound every two months, but maybe every, you know, after every four doses, if they tolerate it really well. Um, and then we're just titrating up the uh, ZetBound uh, as we would any other uh, any other patient on the medication. I'm just a bit more aware of the side effects and more prepared to go slowly. And this would be a conversation that I would have had with the patient as well. It's not a race. We just want you to get where you need to go and not hate your life. And so theoretically, somebody could definitely be on metformin 2000 milligrams and eventually uh, Zepbound 15 milligrams um, and stay there very comfortably and not have any issues. Okay, let's talk about hypothetical situation number two. Somebody's starting Zepbound first and then we add metformin. So in that case, um, I'm starting them on Zepbound 2.5 like I would and then titrating up depending on side effects and just kind of normally, but let's say they get to 15 milligrams and they've been on it for a couple months, they've reached their new normal. And also I should say with the metformin, I'm definitely waiting a little bit between adding, uh, before adding the Zepbound to make sure everything's kind of settled out and um, they're very comfortable and stable on that dose. So in this second situation, um, I'm titrating up as tolerated. Let's see, let's say they did well, they're on 15 milligrams, but their BMI isn't quite where I want it to be. Um, that, and they can't take Phentermine and they can't take something like Contrave or um, Qsimia. And metformin is the only oral option. And let's say we still, there's still some wiggle room in terms of their BMI. And of course, it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, we're always optimizing their lifestyle changes as well. But let's say we want to add an oral medication. Metformin is usually not my first choice, but um, let's say for this hypothetical situation, it's the only choice. And in that case, I'm doing very similar to what I would do in the reverse, but I already know how they reacted to the ZepBound, so I have a pretty good sense of, okay, is their GI tract a little more sensitive or is it not? Because that's going to um, really help dictate how they do on the metformin. So if they are more sensitive, um, I'm gonna try to get them over to the extended release sooner because I know that's gonna be more helpful and I'm definitely gonna titrate them up very, very slowly. But overall, with either situation, it's really a discussion on the risks or the benefits. Um, it's always, this is a great um, question because I think it really hammers home the point that there are lots of different ways to get, this should be very individualized and tailored for the patient. And what you really want is that somebody is monitored um, and that they're being followed appropriately because these can have pretty significant side effects. And um, you want to, of course, you want people to, to um, be healthy and be safe and feel good while they're doing it. The medications are not, not going to work if you're too sick to take them. So it's better to um, go slow. There's no race. It's better to go slow and uh, monitor people and adjust so you can course correct as needed um, and safely get people where they want to go. And in five years time, you're really not going to care if this took, you know, six months, 12 months, 18 months, it, it's not going to make a difference to you. So you might as well just do it in a way that's comfortable and the most uh, pleasant for you. So, and as always talk with your prescribing physician, if you feel like this is a combination that might work well for you, again, not medical advice. I'm just walking you through how I would clinically think about somebody in this scenario. But thank you so much for such an interesting question. Um, if you have questions about how to work with me directly, let's say you're somebody who 
isn't sure if you want to be on a medication at all, you kind of want to do it on your own, you hear a lot about medications, we should definitely have a chat. Um, I'll leave all that info down below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. It's the place for medically based answers to your weight questions. Thank you so much for watching and please be well.